Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Sayyid Ali Madan Azmi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn some basics about cylindrical coordinates. And then we will learn about the transformation equation. And after that, we will learn how we can evaluate triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates represent a point P in space, this point P in space by the order triplet R theta and Z, in which R and theta are the polar coordinates for the vertical projection of P on the XY plane. Z is the rectangular vertical coordinate. Cylindrical coordinates are actually the extension of polar coordinates in third dimension. If you see in this figure, if you and you consider only x axis and y axis, then the coordinate of this point where my mouse is right now will be r and theta only in two dimension space. And if we lift this point in the vertical direction, then with respect to z axis, its coordinate become r theta and z. So this is how we can extend our polar coordinates into cylindrical coordinates. Next, uh, we have some transformation equations. Equation, equation relating rectangular and cylindrical coordinates as x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta, z equal to z, r square is equal to x square plus y square, tan theta is equal to y over x. In the transformation equation, you can see x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. You have already studied in the polar coordinate system. Similarly, the reverse transformation equation r square is equal to x squared plus y square, tan theta is equal to y over x, or theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x is also studied in the system of polar coordinates. Here for the third axis z, we will take z equal to z in both coordinate systems. And in order to integrate a triple integral in three dimension space, in cylindrical coordinates, we will always take the diff small differential volume element as dz is equal to dv is equal to dz into r dr d theta. Next, we will learn question number four from exercise 15.7 of Thomas Calculus 12th ed edition book. Here, you can see we have three variables, dz, dr, and d theta. In cylindrical coordinates, our most outer variable is g, our inner variable is r, and our outer variable is theta. And this arrangement is fixed in cylindrical coordinates. We will always take z as our inner variable, r as our central variable, and theta as our outer variable. And we will also follow this order in the process of integration. First, we will integrate with respect to z, then we will integrate with respect to r, and then we will apply the process of integration with respect to theta. Here, the limits of z are minus square root of 4 minus r square to 3 into square root of 4 minus r square. Limits of r are 0 to theta over pi, and limits of theta are 0 to pi. We have to integrate z for with respect to the variable z first. So the integration of z is z squared over 2 with the help of power formula for the given limits. In the next step, we will apply limits by using fundamental theorem of calculus. We can take 1 over 2 outside, and then we can apply limits. For upper limit, we have replaced z with 3 into square root of 4 minus r square. And for lower limit, we have replaced z with minus square root of 4 minus r square. Upper limit minus lower limit. In the next step, we will perform the simplification. When we apply the square, c square become 9. Square and square root will be cancelled out. Minus remain as it is. Minus 1 square is 1. And square and square will be cancelled out. So we have 1 by 2, 9 into 4 minus r square minus 4 minus r square. So when we will subtract 9 minus 1, we get 8. 1 by 2, 8 into 4 minus r square. Up till here, we have completed the process of integration and simplification with respect to with respect to z. In the next step, we will perform integration with respect to r. So for r, we can multiply 4 with r, and we can multiply r squared with r. So we get 4r minus r cube. And in the previous step, if you simplify 8 with 2, you will get 4. 4 is constant. We have taken it outside. Now in the next step, we'll perform the integration by using power rule. Integration of r will be r squared over 2. Integration of r cube is r raised to power 4 over 4. In the next step, we will apply the limits after simplification. 
Here is a simplification, and this is the application of limit, upper limit minus lower limit. For upper limit, we have replaced r with theta over pi, and for lower limit, we have replaced r with zero in the given term. Making the simplification, we have two over pi square into theta square, minus one over four pi raised to power four, theta raised to power four. Up till here, we have completed the process of integration with respect to r. In the next step, we will perform the integration with respect to theta. Now the integration of theta with respect to, now integration of theta square with respect to theta is theta cube over three, and integration of theta raised to power four is theta raised to power five over five. Making the simplification, after applying the integration, we have four into three, 2 over 3 pi square theta cube minus 1 over 20 pi raised to power 4 theta raised to power 5. In the next step, we will apply the limits, upper limit minus lower limit. So for lower limit, we have replaced theta with 0. So lower term becomes 0. The second bracket becomes 0. And the first bracket, we, ha we have replaced theta with pi. So we have pi cube minus pi raised to power 5 here from these values. In the next step, making the simplification, we have 2 by 3 pi minus 1 over 20 pi. When you simplify pi cube with pi square, you will get only 1 pi, 2 by 3 pi. And when you simplify pi raised to power 5 with pi raised to power 4, you will get 1 over 20 pi. Taking the LCM, we have, after simplification, 37 pi over 15. I hope you have understood this question. Please like, subscribe, and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.